What's up everyone, it's Stevie and I'm back in Roblox Bedwars and today we're gonna to be covering 15 things Bedwars needs to add. And of course, when I say Bedwars needs to add, I mean the EasyGG team, the developers of the game. These are 15 things I've thought about for a while now and I really think we need them or at least a handful of them. When Bedwars was first released, obviously the idea was very simple and straightforward. You have a bed, you have a base, you need to take out everyone else's beds and you know, you need to build to them and such and basic gameplay, right? You're familiar with the Bedwars concept, hopefully. And beyond that, obviously the game's really evolved we they added kits they added so much to the game but of course there's gonna be an obvious list of things we really want them to add and there's so much limited times so what I'm going through is a list of 15 things that I'd love to see in the game starting from the least to the most important but before I jump into this list make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out in future videos and make sure you hit that like button so others can see it too also huge thanks for all your support we're almost to 350,000 subscribers I'm super excited we're so close to this milestone so starting with number 15 is an arsenal style end screen that shows MVP most damage and some other stat. A lot of the times you finish a round and someone gets the last kill and it just shows that, you know, some team won, right? Blue team wins or whatever, but it doesn't give credit to the best plays of the game. And I think, you know, a losing team could still technically be number one, most damage or most kills or most bed breaks, some kind of really cool stat to show. And that's what I really love about the Arsenal end screens. And it really shows who performed the best in that match. And it's not only a cool pat on your back, but it's also a great way to spot hackers. That's right. Imagine a hacker wins the game this screen should include both the display name and the username of that player so you can see who they truly are at the end of the screen so you can screenshot it if someone comes through your game and hacks within 30 seconds and the round is over there's no time typically for you to go and look for their name in the player list so this is a two for one not only do you get the flex and the you know pat on your back but you also have a chance to go and catch hackers and report them you know a lot easier so an end screen like this would be huge and it's also just a great flex right kind of a no-brainer i don't think it's going to take the devs that long to build Next up with number 14 are weapon skins. That's right, weapon skins. If you notice one thing, as part of this Vanessa kit that was recently released, there's this really, really crazy looking bow and everyone's like, dude, why isn't the bow looking like that? When I'm Vanessa, my bow should look like that, right? So wouldn't it be cool if your bow had different skins? Like you could have a really cool looking gold bow or something or a DV skin bow. Yeah, you want some DV skins. I want a DV sword. That's right. So imagine if you have like an emerald sword that's instead of, you know, emeralds, it's like flames and it has like a DV style. Okay, I'm just, I don't know. I really want some DB skins. That's okay. It doesn't have to be DB skin, but it would be really cool, especially as part of the battle pass if there were skins that we can either buy or unlock or earn, and especially cool if they were limited. And so, you know, again, I really want this Vanessa skin. Why not have really cool bow skins? That'd be super cool. Next up with number 13, speaking of skins, kit skins. That's right, some cosmetics that we could show. So if I'm the archer skin, imagine if they reskinned, you know, something like the archer and the archer had like really cool glowing eyes or something, or you can, you know, earn these skins maybe through rank games or something. So you can unlock these new skins. I think battle pass would be the most obvious approach, especially making them limited. But it'd be really cool if we had kit skins that you could have for your favorite kits that you'd like to use. Imagine getting like a really cool looking barbarian skin, for example, and running around the map and people are like, oh my gosh, how'd you get that? A couple great games that do this all the time for their characters and champions are games like League of Legends and Overwatch where you have these really cool skins that you can unlock. On top of that, they could go a step further and create clan skins or even content creator skins that could be unlocked or purchased. So maybe for a limited time, they release, you know, clan skins and you can get like an LZ or G-Dogs or, you know, whomever your favorite clan is. Um, you can get those skins for that clan and rep your clan. That'd be really cool. Who doesn't want a DV Archer skin? Okay, don't say that. Don't say that you don't want my skin, but you know, look, I want it. Okay, so, you know, buy it, please. You start code DV if you buy Robux. Next up with number 12 is a night mode. Imagine a nighttime mode in Bedwars where it's really hard to see like a night vision goggles or something. It'd be really cool even without the night vision, but having a dark mode or a night mode would be crazy. It'd be so much harder to see where players are running around, especially if all you can see their name tags and you can fall off. The Minecraft version of Bedwars has a lot of night maps, but it's really dark and it's really just a change of scenery. Ultimately, night mode would be really, really cool. Next up with the number 11 is the obvious. I think everyone wants this is just more content for the battle pass, especially season two. As of this video, we don't have that much content to really justify buying this battle pass. I think the battle pass season one was way more jam packed with content and kits, maybe because people complain a lot more for that battle pass and they didn't really know what to put in it. But this battle pass has been kind of light and I'm sure the devs are going to be, you know, doing some updates to the game and adding more content to it. Like I said, you know, what I just mentioned were weapon skins and new kits. And I think, you know, five kits 
rockets in a battle pass is probably enough, but if they had more to it, because I don't know about you, but I'm not really into the sprays or status titles or anything like that. But if they had more things that I could wear on my character, I'd be more down for that. And I think a lot of players would be too, especially if they're unlimited. Next up with number 10 is remote detonation kit. That's right. A kit that can remote detonate TNT or some kind of bomb would be crazy cool. Imagine like you can set up like explosives on a bridge. And as soon as someone crosses that bridge, you can remote detonate that TNT or mines and take them out. But some way to be able to take out enemies and surprise them with explosives would be hilarious. So if your bed alarm starts going off and you know someone's at your base, you can remote detonate and take them out. Next up with number nine is a battle royale mode. I have to give a shout out to Telanthric because this is kind of his idea. He did like this video with, you know, some YouTubers in a battle royale mode. But I've also seen a lot of YouTubers with tournaments force players to go to mid because games just last way too long. So imagine if you had a battle royale limited time mode where the sphere or the walls enclosed in after the beds broke or after any time the beds break, maybe these walls start coming in and you can really force players to the center and limit the time for a match. So players aren't just ballooning and purling around the entire map and avoiding, you could have these walls closing in and force them all to the middle of the map. That would be so killer. It would be a great feature for a fast paced round to be able to get through these rounds very quickly. I think it would be a lot of fun. Now you can make a spin of that too. You can make it so that it's like maybe players are dropping in randomly on a map instead of having beds. Maybe it's more like a battle royale, like a true battle royale where you're getting loot and stuff. Like kind of just do like a lucky blocks meets battle royale mode would be kind of kind of cool without beds and it's just basically survival mode that'd be kind of cool too Next up, one number eight is Last Man Standing, and this is a mode I'd really love to have. Even if it's not Last Man Standing, if it's just Deathmatch, that'd be cool. But ultimately, Last Man Standing mode would be neat, where essentially it's not quite like a solo match, but essentially everyone's beds are you know broken at the start of the game, and you pretty much have to survive the entire match. And whoever is the last person standing wins, and it's just a Deathmatch mode. As much as I love this mode, I would much rather have a Deathmatch or TDM. That'd be really fun. But hey, you know, Last Man Standing is a popular mode, so why not? Next up, one number seven is a Capture the Flag or capture the bed or capture the wool mode. Essentially what you're doing is you're running to an enemy base, you're jumping in and you're taking off with something from their base, right? And you need to capture that item. And it could be a 30 v 30 style map or a 16 v 16, or even just four v four where you pick someone else's flag and you're just basically trying to capture as many flags as you can within the time limit or up to like three points or something, or, you know, five points, however you want to do it. But capture the flag would be so fun because you don't have to worry about breaking beds. And we already saw this with the infected mode. I absolutely love the infected mode where you don't have to worry about breaking beds. I've played more hours of infected than I have lucky block or any other game mode other than squads. So infected is just a ton of fun. I have a blast, even though it's not balanced yet as of this video. And then I know the devs are going to be balancing that a bit. So hopefully we're going to be able to have infected for a little while longer. I really like the mode. I hope they keep some kind of mode like this. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of breaking beds. And I really like this mode because we don't have to focus on bed breaking. Next up when Number six is balancing kits. That's right, balancing kits. And I've given a lot of feedback to the devs and in general to the community about where I think kits are just a little unbalanced. I think, you know, some kits require emeralds when their counterpart kits don't, you know, and, and some kits just require iron. Some kits get items at the start of the round. It just doesn't, it feels like it's all over the place. And maybe because there's different developers working on different kits. And because of that, maybe they're not as balanced as they could be. You know, the obvious, I've done a bunch of kit videos. I think there's some really, really easy changes that the devs can make. But unfortunately, it's going to require a lot more than a kit balance here and there. I think more than half of the kits just need a full balance update. And imagine if the devs spent like a week balancing and playtesting these. I think the game would be so much better because the kits would be way more balanced. Like Spirit Catcher, for example, still very OP. But on the flip side of that, why do Ravens cost Emerald? That's just one example of an issue with balancing kits is that certain kits should not require, you know, Emeralds to be able to use. You know, there's different ways you could balance these kits to make them a lot more fun to play with. And and easier to use and more fair to play with. So coming up at number five is UGC Maps. And you wonder, what is UGC Maps, TV? Well, UGC Maps basically means user-generated content, right? So the, what I'm looking at for this is the ability for you as a map creator to be able to submit maps for review for including in Bedwars itself. I know as mentioned earlier early on that they wanted to be able to have players be able to submit maps for review and consideration for inclusion in the game. The problem is I don't know if they have this process still. The other thing I don't really know is whether or not we really truly Really need more maps. We have so many maps currently that I feel like some of these maps, you know, you just never see anymore. Or if you do, it's maybe not the greatest map, or sometimes you just see the new maps over and over and over. So there might be a little bit more features required for the game to be able to support, you know, map selection other than custom map. But either way, imagine if there's a way for you to be able to design maps and, you know, have them included or immediately upload them and include them in custom modes, you know, some, some automated way to be able to process your UGC maps. So I don't really know if that's something that they'd be able to do in the future, but it'd be really cool to be able to have a process is where some of the greatest builders in the community could make their
their own maps. I know there's a lot of islands builders who are insanely good at map creation and it'd be really cool to see what they could come up with. Speaking of islands, with number four, we really need Bedwars item rewards in islands. We need a crossover here where things that you've achieved in Bedwars should be rewarded back in islands. And this is the tie-in I was really, really hoping the devs would do. And I even talked with them before the game came out saying, I would love for us to see more integration with your new game with islands. And to be honest, I feel like islands kind of got neglected here more than I think the devs intended. There's no integration period in islands other than a portal. And I feel like there's such a missed opportunity here with the games already being linked. You notice that if you're in islands, you'll get a notification if someone joins Bedwars. So I know they have some kind of tie-in tracking for this to be able to see if you're playing Bedwars or vice versa. Now, if they had a further tracker where I could get rewarded an item in islands for playing Bedwars or completing infection, maybe if I won an infection round, I get some really cool zombie, you know, like character that can walk or zombie pet or some kind of characters that, you know, run around in islands. And I think by doing so, we'd see a lot more Bedwars players playing islands and vice versa. So there needs to be a closer tie-in with Bedwars. Next up with number three is a setting I really, really need. And that is a field of view or fob setting. If you play Arsenal or even Minecraft, you're probably used to being able to change your fob setting. And what it really does is widens your peripheral vision um, or your field of view to be able to see players near you. So imagine if someone's run up to the left of you currently inside Bedwars, Roblox Bedwars, you don't really see them. It's really, you know, your camera is so zoomed in that you can't really see someone like, you know, coming up to the side of you. And so you can end up getting ganked very easily, especially if you're in a first person view. Next up with number two is fixing arrow collision. That's right. There is a huge bug currently in the game with arrows. As of this video, we have a bug in the game where sometimes your arrow will get absorbed by a player but not be recognized with any kind of knockback or damage. And you'll see that your arrow gets absorbed by the player model. It's not impacting any blocks. It's not. It just doesn't go past the player and it gets absorbed and you don't see any kind of damage indicator. You don't see any knockback and you don't even see them taking any damage. So this is a huge, huge bug for me as an arrow or bow spammer. I'll sometimes hit someone over and over and you just see the arrows getting absorbed by that player over and over and over. And it almost seems like it's maybe hidden their block or the item in their hand or something. It could be maybe it's hidden their sword, but it's not hitting some kind of collision box. And it could be that the collision box is too small. The devs believe the bug has been around for a while now, but I haven't been able to pinpoint exactly what update it was introduced in. And so hopefully they'll be able to find a fix for that because it is super annoying. So finally, this is the final one here. And I'm not going to ask the devs. You probably think I'm going to ask the devs to remove balloons. And you're wrong because I don't believe they should remove the balloons. It's not because I don't personally believe they should. It's because I I think they should only remove the balloons if the entire community or the majority community believes this. But sadly, the community split 50-50 in this. And because of that, I don't think they should remove it. If, if it was a majority, if like 60, 70, 80% of the community really didn't like balloons, I would say get rid of them. 100%. You need to get rid of them. I believe balloons were in the game. 100%. But here's the problem. I don't think they should remove them because then it's going to ruin the experience for a lot of casual players. And I understand that. They are kind of fun too. I do admit they are kind of fun to you know float around with, but it's a problem for me. So how do we solve this? It's not through kits. There's so many people that keep telling me DV, well, we have Ravens. You're talking about a kit. You're talking about Raven is a kit. And not only is Raven a kit, it is it is a battle pass kit that doesn't even exist. You can't even purchase this. So what about those players that can't even earn the Raven anymore? You should not have to counter a non-kit item with a kit, if that makes sense, right? So if balloons are not tied to a specific like clown kit, for example, then you should not have to use a specific kit to be able to counter that balloon, right? Because it's an item that anyone can get, whereas a kit is not something that everyone can get. So that argument does not work with me. I think they need to add an item inside this shop that can counter very, very easily. And I'm not talking bow and arrows because I know you're just saying, well, DB, you just shoot them down with arrow. There's many players that do not know how to use bows and arrows. So they're going to have to use some other item other than bows and arrows. I've seen the best archers in Bedwars not be able to shoot down someone with balloons. So again, this is a huge problem with the game. And unless they add something like this, I think it's just kind of ruined. So this is where you come into having to buy an item that can take out balloons. What is that item? I think there could be something like a pellet type item. Maybe you can buy something that does an AOE kind of effect nearby. Maybe it's a really expensive sound item that requires emeralds that you can launch at balloons. You need to have something in the game that can be purchased from the shop to be able to counter balloons. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Obviously, not everyone wants balloons to be removed, but I think a lot of players agree with me that balloons are super annoying. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in Bed Wars, what you think is most important, what your top 15 list is. Be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell, and I will see you all in the next vid. Peace.